فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We are taking uh, the book I'm still studying the book دفع إيهام الاضراب عن آيات الكتاب written by الشيخ العلامة محمد الأمين ابن محمد المختار ابن عبد القادر الجكني الشنقيطي رحمه الله We are at the third point We are at the third ayah that some claim there is contradiction in in it towards other ayat of the Quran so the sheikh says قوله تعالى هدى للمتقين sheikh says خصص في هذه الآية هدى هذا الكتاب بالمتقين this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he specified guidance of the Quran to the pious people. ذلك الكتاب لا ريبة فيه هدى للمتقين it is a guidance to the pious people. This is what the Sheikh is saying. So in this ayah, who is the guidance restricted to? This ayah, the guidance is restricted to the muttaqin. وَقَدْ جَاءَ فِي آيَةٍ أُخْرَى But in another verse, there has come مَا يَدُلُّ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ هُدَاهُ عَامٌ لِجَمِيعِ النَّاسِ But in another ayah, the guidance has been uh, attributed to all of mankind. وَهِيَ And it is قوله تعالى the statement of Allah سبحانه وتعالى شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس in this ayah Allah says the month of Ramadan الذي أنزل فيه القرآن which the Quran was sent down هدى the Quran is guidance to who للناس to the people so in this verse the Quran is guidance for who? Everyone. But in the ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah, it is guidance for the muttaqin. So there's a contradiction here, as some claim. So how can we reconcile between the two? Because what we know, my beloved brothers and sisters, and it is a preconceived notion that every Muslim knows prior to standing over a verse where he or she may assume that it contradicts another ayah, the thing that the person previously has in his mind is that the Qur'an does not contradict one another. As Allah said in the Qur'an, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنِ Do they not ponder on the Qur'an? وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا And they will not find in the book of Allah. Ponder on it, and they will not find in the Qur'an whatsoever any contradiction. So if this Qur'an was to come from anybody other than Allah, you would find contradiction in it. But since it has come from Allah, you will never find any contradictions in it. So we already know that. But the question we ask is not, these two verses are contradicting. Is The question we ask is, how can we reconcile between them? So the Shaykh says, The way to reconcile between the two verses, the one that is specifying the guidance for the pious people, and the verse that is saying guidance is for all of mankind, the way we reconcile between the two is by saying, huda that guidance, يُسْتَعْمَلُ It is used في القرآن in the book of Allah. استعمالين 
it is used in two ways. The usage of the word guidance, it comes in the Quran in two ways. Ahaduhuma, the first one is Amun, it is general. Wathani, the second one, Khasun, it is specific. So, the guidance in the Quran is two types guidance which is general and guidance which is specific. As for the guidance which is general, its meaning is The first type of guidance, the general guidance is clarifying the true path. It is to clarify the true path. Whether the person or the individual treads on that path or whether he doesn't, it doesn't matter. The clarification of the truth is known as the general guidance. Any person who shows a person a path, he has guided them. Whether the person follows that path that you've guided them to or whether they do, whether they do or not, it doesn't matter. The fact that you have told them the true path is a guidance. And what's the evidence for that? وَمِنْهُ بِهَذَا الْمَعْنَى The example for this, that supports this meaning is قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى The statement of Allah وَأَمَّا ثَمُودُ فَهَدَيْنَاهُمْ As for the people of Thamud, we guided them. Were the people of Thamud guided? Were the people of Thamud? Were the people of Thamud, were they guided? Who was their prophet, by the way? Salih alayhi salam. Were they guided? They were misguided people. So why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying we guided the people of the mood? Shaykh says, It means that we show them the straight path. On the tongue of our Prophet Salih. May peace and salutation be upon our Prophet and Nabiullah Salih. Even that though the people of Thamud, the truth was shown to them on the tongue of their Prophet Salih, but they did not tread on that path. And Allah wa Taala, look what He said right after that. Look what He said, Subhanahu wa Taala, right after it. As for the people of Thamud, we guided them to the straight path, but they chose. Blindness over the guidance. So the guidance here right now is what? Showing them the correct path and the true path in which Allah wa Taala wants you to be on. By taking His commands. And staying away from that which He prohibited you from. Subhanahu wa Taala. And also another example for the general type of guidance. Another example is قوله تعالى, the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala إِنَّا هَدَيْنَاهُ السَّبِيلَ Allah says, verily we have guided them to the path. أَيْ بَيَّنَّا لَهُمْ طَرِيقَ الْخَيْرِ وَالشَّرِّ It means we clarified for them the path of good from the path of evil. We guided them, I meaning we showed them. We told them this is the straight path and this is the wrong path. We clarified it for them. What's the evidence that this guidance here is meant by the general type of guidance, the one that we defined, which is the same verse explains it, which is إِنَّا هَدَيْنَاهُ السَّبِيلَ إِمَّا شَاكِرًا وَإِمَّا كَفُورًا So that means they did not take the path. Because of the ayah, imma shakiran, some of them came with gratitude and some of them came with disbelief. So what does that show? The inna hadaynahu means here, ibana tu tariqi al haqi wa idahi al mahajja, wa lam yasluku, and they did not take that path that Allah wa ta'ala showed them. So now we learned what the first type of guidance was. 
And it is clear to us right now, sah? Good. The second type is The guidance which is specific. What is this one? فَهُوَ تَفَضُّلُ اللَّهِ بِالتَّوْفِيقِ عَلَى الْعَبْدِ This one is Allah bestowing his virtue upon his slave by allowing the guidance to enter his heart and to manifest on his limbs. This is not now just showing him the path. It is actually him accepting the truth as it is and the evil and staying away from it. He's actually, it's now manifesting on his limbs. فَهُوَ تَفَضُّلُ اللَّهِ It is Allah Taala bestowing his virtue upon this slave by allowing the truth to enter his heart and manifest on his limbs. Where's the evidence for this? وَمِنْهُ From the examples to strengthen this definition or to support this definition is قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى The statement of Allah هُوَ الَّذِي أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ هَدَى اللَّهُ Verily, these are the ones who Allah guided. What does the guidance mean here? A, it means Allah has bestowed upon him his virtue by placing the truth in their hearts and allowing that truth to manifest on those limbs of theirs. Ulaikaladina, the ones who have been mentioned, had Allah who Allah guided them. Also, in Surah Al An'am, Ayah 125, Allah says, وَقَوْلُهُ فَمَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَهْدِيَهُ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ Anyone who Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala wants to guide him. Which guidance is it here? It is the guidance which Allah bestows upon his slave. The blessing and the virtue of placing the truth in his heart and allowing it to manifest on his limbs. Once that happens, فَمَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَهْدِيَهُ He wants hidayah al-dalala. So hidayah al-tawfiq. Hidayah to Tawfiq. When Allah wants to give you Hidayah to Tawfiq, what does He do? Yashrah sadrahu lil Islam. Allah opens your chest, your breast. Allah opens it, subhanahu wa ta'ala, for Islam to uh, govern you, for Islam to enter your heart. You see? Fa'ida alimta dalika. And you come to get, you come to gain comprehension of what I have mentioned. Fa'alam no also. Anna al huda al khasa. بِالْمُتَّقِينَ هُوَ الْهُدَى الْخَاصُ That the specific guidance is what the first ver- the, the verse is referring to. هُدَى لِلْمُتَّقِينَ is referring to what? Is referring to هُدَى الْخَاصُ The specific guidance. Meaning, Allah, He chooses to place His virtue uh, in the hearts of the pious people. And He allows them the truth to manifest on their limbs. So their huda is the huda that actually means they've accepted the truth as it is and they've taken it on board and they've implemented it. And as for the next the one, which is Shahru Ramadan, that is the type which is general, showing them the straight path and uh, the path of evil and allowing them to know which of them is which but necessarily they don't follow it or they do follow it it doesn't matter if they follow it then it becomes hud al-khas if, if they follow it and it is ibanatu al-tariq bihi wa huwa ibanatu al-tariq wa idahu al wa bihada yartafi'u al-ishkalu aydan and based on that and this explanation, that doubt and ambiguity is lifted from a person. You see? And it also uplifts the ambiguity between the, which verse? Qawluhu ta'ala, the statement of Allah, bayna qawlihi ta'ala, innaka la tahdi man ahbabta, the ayah in Surah Al-Qasas, ayah 56, which is, wa innaka la tahdi ila siratim mustaqim. That Muhammad, you do not guide whoever you wish. And in another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's saying to the Prophet, and verily you guide to the straight path. You see? لِأَنَّ الْهُدَى الْمَنْفِيَّ عَنْهُ صلى الله عليه وسلم هُوَ الْهُدَى الْخَاصُ Because the first verse is negating the guidance from the Prophet. 
The guidance that is negated from the Prophet, it is the specific guidance. It is the guidance of placing the truth in the people's hearts. That's not in his hand. Because it's in the hands of Allah. Anyone who Allah wants to test him, Allah wants to place trials and tribulations onto him, Muhammad, you do not have strength and power. Lahu min Allah shay'an besides Allah. No one has power for them. No one can help them. So the guidance in entering the hearts of the people, that is only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one can do that. So that is the one that's been negated from the Prophet in the verse of Surah Al-Qasas, Ayah 56. But the one, Walhuda uh, Al-Muthbata, but the guidance that is, that's been affirmed for him, Walhuda Al-Ammu Al-Ladhi Huwa Ibanatu Al-Tariqi. It is the general guidance. The guidance which uh, the path is being clarified for him. وَقَدْ بَيَّنَّاهَا And we have clarified that. Uh, well, sorry. وَقَدْ بَيَّنَّاهَا صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمُ Sorry. And the Prophet, he clarified the path to turn back to Allah. The path which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with. That he did. وَكَذَلِكَ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ رُوحًا مِنْ أَمْرِنَا مَا كُنْتَ تَدْرِي مَا الْكِتَابُ وَلَا الْإِيمَانُ وَلَكِنْ جَعَلْنَاهُ نُورًا نَهْدِي بِهِ مِنْ نَشَاءِ مِنْ أَبَادِنَا وَإِنَّكَ لَتَهْدِي إِلَى صِلَاطِ مُسْتَقِيمٍ It means the path, you sh- he did do that one. That's been affirmed for him. وَقَدْ بَيَّنَهَا صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ The Prophet, he clarified that path. حَتَّى تَرَكَهَا Until he left the people upon what? مَحَجَّةً بَيْضَاء لَيْلُهَا كَالنَّهَارِهَا And he left the people upon clarity, brightness, white. It's night, it's day. It's day. So basically there's no night. It's all day. That's how clear it when he left the people. So that type of guidance is affirmed for him. Not only is it affirmed for him, but he really did do it. Alayhi salatu wasalam. He did it what? Verbally. And he also even done it physically. He drew, alayhi salatu wasalam, that path. By saying to the people, alayhi salatu wasalam, وَأَنَّ هَذَا صِرَاطِي مُسْتَقِيمًا فَاتَّبِعُوهُ وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا السُّبُولَ فَتَفَرَّقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ ذَلِكُمْ وَصَّاكُمْ بِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ And he also said, Allah Tabarakut Ta'ala also said, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ أَلَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي وَسُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي This is my path I call the people to. So the Prophet had a methodology and a path in which he was upon عليه الصلاة والسلام. And he clarified that path. He clarified it so much that Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, قَامَ فِينَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمَ ذَاتَ يَوْمِ The Prophet stood amongst us one day. He stood out and he led us the Salatul Fajr. And when he finished the prayer, alayhi salatu wasalam, and he led us, he stood on the pulpit and he gave us a reminder until Dhuhr came. And then he led us the prayer, the Dhuhr prayer. And then the Prophet went back and he stood on the pulpit again and he spoke until Asr. And then he led the Salatul Asr. And then he went back on the pulpit again. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke until Maghrib. And then he led the prayer, the Maghrib prayer. Jabir said, Hafidha man hafidha wa nasiha man nasiha. The one who memorized it that day memorized what the Prophet said. And the one that forgot it, forgot it. The Prophet told them every single thing they needed. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to the people of Hajjat al-Wada' using his finger, pointing it at the people. Allah al ballagh O people, did I convey the message to you guys? 120,000 120, companions. They Arafah. He's doing them the final sermon. Hajjat al-Wada' And he stands amongst the people and he says to them, Allah al ballagh O people, have I conveyed the message of Islam to you? Have I conveyed the responsibilities that Allah placed over me? Have I done it? As Allah told him, Ya ayyuhal rasoolu, ballig ma unzila ilayka min rabbik, wa illam taf'al fa ma ballagta risalat, wallahu ya'asimuka min al-nas. Convey this message. Qum fa'anzir, wa rabbaka fa'kabbir. Stand and convey this message. So he said to the people, did I do my job? Did I do what I was told to do? The people said, bala, of course you did. They didn't say yes. They said, of course. And then he looked at the sky, and the scholars use this to. Um, he pointed towards the sky. He said, "Allahumma fashhad." Oh Allah, bear witness to this. Testify, Allah, this is my witness. I, they all, they all agree to me that I did my job. Alayhi salatu wasalam. So the believer needs to realize 
that there is no need for you to come and to add anything to the religion. It doesn't need that from you. And it doesn't need from you to take anything away from the religion. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he conveyed. He done that for you. فَاتَّبِعْ فَلَوْ قُلْ أَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولَ فَلَوْ Allah and Messenger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala فَإِن تَوَلَّوْ But if you choose to turn away and go against the command of Allah فَإِنَّمَا عَلَيْهِ مَا حُمِّلَ وَعَلَيْكُمْ مَا حُمِّلْتُمْ وَإِن تُطِيعُهُ تَهْتَدُوا وَمَا عَلَى الرَّسُولِ إِلَّا الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينَ if you follow the Prophet, فَإِن تُطِيعُهُ تَهْتَدُوا If you follow the Prophet, you will be guided, wallahi. And nothing is upon the Messenger except to convey. And he did that, alayhi salatu wassalam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَاللَّهُ يَدْعُوا إِلَىٰ دَارِ السَّلَامِ وَيَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ إِلَىٰ صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he calls to the path of peace. He calls to Jannah, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. وَيَهْدِي أَنَ اللَّهَ guides. مَنْ يَشَاءُ whoever he wills إِلَىٰ صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ To the straight path. So we ask Allah with sincerity from the bottom of our hearts. We are not arrogant to say that Allah has guided us. That person who does say that, then he thinks of himself better than the Messenger of Allah. And he thinks better huh, of Nabiullah Ibrahim. Ibrahim, Abu Al-Anbiya, the Prophet, who when you think of Tawheed, you think of him. He said to Allah, Rabbi jinubni wa baniya na'bud al-asnam. Oh Allah, divert me and my children from idol worshipping. Ibrahim broke the idols when he was a boy, a young boy. Very young in his age. He broke the idols. B idols is the shirk that the young boy today, if you take a little kid and say, what's shirk? He'll say to you, worshipping idols. That's the most common type of shirk. There are other types of shirk which are very complicated. That need sometimes understanding and comprehension. There's a shirk called shirk khafi, as the Prophet has said, showing off. But he asked him, asked Allah to Baruch Ta'ala to divert him from the most well known type of shirk. So the believer gets worried. If Ibrahim is asking Allah to guide him on tawheed and to take and prevent him from the, the, the well known shirk, so the believer says that anything can happen to me. Al Qulubu bayna usbu'ayni min asabi al Rahmani yuqallibuha kayfa yasha. The fingers are between, the, sorry, the heart is between the two fingers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يُقَلِّبُهَا كَيْفَ يَشَاءَ Allah tosses and he turns it the way he wills. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also our Prophet Muhammad, Abu al-Anbiya, the best of prophets. He used to say in his Qiyamul Layl, every night before he started anything, reciting any Qur'an or anything, he would say, Allahumma fatir as-samawati wal-ard, alim al-ghaybi wal-shahada, أنت تحكم بين عبادك فيما كانوا فيه يختلفون اهدني لما اختلف فيه من الحق بإذنك إنك تهدي من تشاء إلى صراط مستقيم أو الله guide me he say guide me guide me from all the disputes that are happening and the خلافات and the argumentations and are taking place أو الله guide me to the one that is the best so the believer doesn't leave off by saying to Allah أو الله guide me and that is why Every salah that we pray, we were commanded from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to recite Surah Al-Fatiha. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem. Oh Allah, guide us on the straight path. Because every single person needs it. Ibn Taymiyyah, Al-Allam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he said, If there was a dua greater, better for a person to ask, he would, uh, Allah would have instructed him. To ask, he would have placed in Surah Al-Fatiha. If there was a dua more greater, more powerful than Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem, Allah would have instructed the believers to say it. But since Allah chose Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem Surah Al-Fatiha, and then He commanded you to read Surah Al-Fatiha in every single rak'ah, not once in the salah, but every single rak'ah in the salah, it shows you the importance of knowing that you need guidance and that you haven't reached a point where you're guided. And that when you do say that, your tongue and your heart are in correlation. In other words, you mean it. Oh Allah, guide me. So we say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma fatir as-samawati wal-ard, alim al-ghaybi wa shahada أنت تحكم بين عبادك فيما كانوا فيه يختلفون اهدنا 
لما اختلف فيه من الحق بإذنك إنك تهدي من تشاء إلى صراط مستقيم اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك وطاعتك اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب وآخر دعوانا عن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين سبحانك اللهم بحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أستغفرك وأتوب إليه